All right. Um, last time we were looking at some of the components <coughs> in the .NET framework that helps us develop a site. I guess that's probably a good way to summarize what we're, we talked about last time and what we're going to talk about this time. Um, previous examples, we're all pretty much focused on just doing one page. So we talked about the form elements, validation, custom code, and so on. And all that related to just getting one page to work and, and do what we wanted it to do. Um, I guess custom classes started moving uh, to thinking in a larger scale because, again, the whole purpose of creating those is for reusability. Definitely when we get to master pages, we're thinking in a larger scale. We're thinking of a site as opposed to a single page. There's really no benefit if you're building a single page to create a master page. Um, the idea is that um, you're going to create uh, a larger um, site with, with multiple pages. So, the other piece that relates to what happens when you have more than one page um, is navigation. And navigation, as we all know, is a critical issue in, in web design. Um, being clear with your navigation. Make sure people know exactly what they need to do. Make sure there's consistency. Um, make sure that the navigation, um, again, works well for the user and allows them to find the stuff that they're, that they're interested in. All these are big concerns. When you identify what's wrong with websites, if you, if you um, were, to, were to think of examples of websites that you don't think are particularly effective, more than likely what's going to come to mind is that um, the navigation isn't very good in, in one way or another. Um, that's one of the biggest things. You know, you hear people say, I can't find what I want to. And the site manager, oblivious to this, says, but, but that content's on the site. Well, yeah, it's on the site, but you can't find it, so it doesn't do anyone any good. So therefore, today we're going to look at the tools specifically related to navigation. All right? And we're going to do that in conjunction with the, the master pages that we developed last time. All right? So we'll put two and two together, and uh, we'll come up with, again, sort of a, a framework and sort of the components and the tools for us to create a, uh, a larger application. So I'm going to develop a, a, a simple little uh, application um, that deals with uh, the CISS programs here. All right, for lack of a better topic. I'm not particularly imaginative today. So let's talk about, first of all, what we want our site to look like. All right? And I don't mean what we want it to look like in terms of what we want the pages to look like. You know, that's important. We'll spend a little bit of time playing with that. But uh, I'm more interested in how we want the, strikes, the site's structure to be. All right? Because, uh, again, that's, that's something that's, that's pretty, pretty important. So... As you all know, or maybe you don't know, in the CISS area here at Lorraine Community, there's essentially four majors. There used to be three, and we just within a week or two got the fourth one approved. And the three majors, four majors, are web development, mobile application development, Um, software development, which is probably misnamed, right, because these two definitely are software development as well. It's just they're different flavors of software development. But, you know, that's what it's known by, so that's what it's going to stay known by. And then we have networking. And in networking, there's a couple different paths you can go to. I know there's... You know, there's the associate's degree, and I know there's a university partnership with Akron. So I'll note that off to the side, that there's 
the associate's degree, and there's a university partnership with the University of Akron. All right. So, as with any, as with any topic, we have to decide how to organize this stuff. All right. And I'm not going to spend tons of time agonizing over this, but if you're doing a real site, you should spend some time really thinking about what's the best way to organize this material. All right. Um, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, we're not going to have one page that has every piece of information on it. All right. That that would be dumb. All right. That that would be just be throwing a pile of data at the user and asking them to sort it out. What I'm going to plan is I'm going to plan doing a structure like this. And I'm planning this structure partly because it does make sense. It's a reasonable way to do it. And partly because I want to demonstrate something specific to the navigation. I'm going to have a CISS homepage. All right. From that page, I'm going to have programming and network. And under programming, I'm going to have web development, mobile, and software. And under networking, I'm going to have the associate's degree and the U of A page. So we kind of have a hierarchy, two levels. If I was doing this for real, this would be a reasonable way to do it. Another reasonable way to do it would be to eliminate this middle layer, all right, and just have everything off, off of the home page. But I want to demonstrate multi-layered menus, so we're not going to do that. All right, we're going to have the two levels. All right, let's think about how we want the pages to look. For those of you that have me for CISS 216, um, essentially what we're going to be developing is, is developing some wireframes for this. All right, and let's talk about how we want this to look. Well, every page, this isn't that huge of a site where we need pages to, um, you know, where, where we have a bunch of different kinds of pages. All our pages are kind of the same, right? And therefore, I think we can get by with one wireframe, all right? And what's a wireframe? Again, it's just a very simple diagram that says something like, we're going to have the banner on the top of the page, we're going to have navigation over here, and then we're going to have our content over here. All right. So, very basic wireframe. Again, pretty standard. Maybe we'll have a footer as well, where we're going. We'll put some. You know, any questions, contact and give a contact name. So that's going to be our um, wireframe. Now. What's a wireframe again? It's a sort of a template that we're going to use to clone these other pages. In other words, all of these pages are going to look like this. Now, what's going to be common to this? What's the common code? Well, the banner's going to be common. The nav's going to be common. The footer's going to be common. And what's going to be different is the content area. So, what does that tell us about our master page? That's, this is the only area that varies from page to page. What does that tell us about our master page? There will only be one content placeholder in the body. There will only be one content placeholder in the body. We'll probably keep the one in the header in case we want to put something special in, in the head section. So, right. There's only one content placeholder in the body. and you know, that's, uh, 
that's where we're at with that. All right. Let's see. All right, let's 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 go from there. Let's start building this. All right. I'm going to pay some attention to way to to way the master page looks, but again, this isn't an, an HTML CSS class, so I'm not going to, to spend uh, hours getting a perfect, beautiful looking um, site. I'm going to get pages that, you know, are readable. Um, some uh, effort. We're going to style it. We're going to make sure we get our layout down. But again, we're not we're not going for pretty here. So let's go and make our site. Now again, this is what I mean by planning or design. You know? I could have just sat down and, and created the first, you know, explain you a little bit about what we're going to do and then create the first master page and go from there. But it's good to have a roadmap of what it is that we want. All right, so that when we're creating these things, we're just implementing what we've already thought through. Um, it's my experience that, that, that people have a hard time doing two activities at the same time. All right, you know, it's, it's the classic pat your head and rub your stomach or whatever. All right, that, that you're fighting battles on two fronts. All right. So if you're trying to figure out what you're going to do, and you're doing it at the same time, you're doing two things. You're fighting two battles. It's much better to give some time thinking about what you're going to do first, and then go ahead and do it. So plan it, do it. Now to be sure, in the middle of doing, we might discover something we forgot. All right, so we might have to go back and rework our plan. When I say to plan it, it doesn't imply to have, you know, to plan it and have, you know, every single detail ironed out to the nth degree. It's just have an idea what you're going to do. Look before you leave. All right, so I'll go here and I will create my application in Visual Studio. Yes? I was wondering, for a lab, could we do like our project subject and use it as like a trial run? For the lab, could you uh, do the project? Yeah. I mean, the final project will have database interactivity, so, you know, but it, if you want to get like some of the static stuff down or, or whatever, yeah, you're welcome to do that. I was going to do that, but you said don't make it for a specialized audience for this. I said, don't make it for a specialized audience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean by that? I don't know. I haven't gotten down that far. I don't know if you did it last semester or something. Or, um... it, it just, yeah. Let me see what it says exactly. It, it means probably what you were thinking that was like, don't put like specific photos of like family and that in there, maybe. Yeah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let me catch my exact word. Maybe that will. Consider your audience to be the general public, i.e., not some specialized audience. Yeah, I didn't know if you had something in mind from last semester, because I know the last project said VB, but we were doing C. Right. So. Um, <clears throat> um, that, that's fine. Um, <laughs> if that's what the verbiage says, um, I, what is your topic? Let's, let's talk in specific terms. What is your topic? Repeat, please. Ashley or me? No, you. Oh. Um, well, I was going to do, like, my um, my family's, um, I don't know, like, make a website for my family. It's just, like, huge on my dad's side. We have a family reunion. It was going to be, like, part of it photos, part of it events, part of it um, the family tree. Um, I don't know if I already say history. Um, Uh, well, again, what I meant is this. All right, 
let me let me give you an example. All right, you could argue that what I'm doing today is for a specialized audience. It's only for people that care about LCCC and CISS. That's true, but I'm not writing it from the perspective of someone who knows LCCC inside and out. You know what I mean? So I don't. I didn't say that to limit your choice of topic. I said it to give you some idea in the design and in the deciding how to set things uh, uh, up, up on the page and how to divide um, your topic into the subtopics. So, again, you know, if I did a website for LC, yeah, that probably only, the only audience is probably people in Northeast Ohio. But what I'm saying is, don't write it for someone that is familiar with LC, all right? Um, so if you're doing a family page, you're welcome to do that if you still want to, but write it so that if someone outside the family got to it, they could navigate their way through it. It would be clear enough for them. So, so is that similar to like if you have a business and you're using buzzwords that only you know? E exactly, exactly. For example, if you look in, in my structure diagram, remember I, I said uh, that it made sense to me to have a layer for programming versus networking. And that was done partly in mind with the thought that someone coming in, you know, might not know exactly what they want to do, might just jump to software thinking that software was all-encompassing, whereas software is relating to, to desktop development. Um, therefore, I put that layer in there so someone could go and see all the programming choices and then go and choose the one that they want. So again, my, my statement there was less to limit your topic and more to give you some perspective for how to design it for an audience. All right. Uh, in other words, um, like uh, to, to a further example for the family site is if you're making a site for your family, any member of your family should be able to access it, or anyone interested in your family should be able to access it and figure out how to navigate. It shouldn't be, shouldn't depend on you knowing who uh, Cousin Luke's daughter was to, to work through the navigation. So I, I hope that clarifies that. Uh, again, um, yeah, that wasn't meant to discourage you from a topic that was meant to give you some perspective when you're deciding how to approach the, the, the whole taxonomy, how you're going to divide your topic, and so on. All right, so let's start out, and let's go and make our application. New website. We'll call it CISS, and we'll make it an empty website. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot out my master page. And I'm going to get the layout of that, what I want. All right, so I'll go in. File, new, file. A new master page. Add. First of all, if we look at this, we don't really have to tweak. We don't really have to add a content placeholder, as we said before. If you remember, we said that there's only one spot of a page that was going to vary from page to page. So therefore, the one content placeholder we have there is going to work fine. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to sort of build a structure. We're going to build a shell around that. All right? to get the, the proper layout that we want so that our template here matches the wireframe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a CSS file. And 
am going to start. I'm going to do the, the HTML and the CSS at the same time. So I'll go in here and I'm going to put an ID of content on this guy. If you have me in CISS 216, you've seen this a million times. I'll put a div with an ID of banner. I'll put a div with an ID of nav. And I'll put a div with an ID of footer. Right. And I can go in and I can probably fill some of this content in now. The nav I'm going to save for a minute, all right, because that's, that's our topic. So I want to spend a good amount of time on that. But I want to get some very basic positioning done right. So I'll do, I'll make my H1 and say Lorraine County Community College. H2 Computer Information Systems. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some styling to, to different uh, to different things. And I'm going to uh, Alright. I'm going to put some stuff in the navigation here. And we'll replace that with our real navigation in a minute. One nice thing about the fact that we're doing this master file bit, uh, our master page, is that when you're doing a, just a straight static HTML site, you better have your common HTML code set before you start cloning it. All right, Because otherwise you're going to have to go and redo it after you've started cloning it. Here, you have a little more freedom, right? Because if I define the master page, if there's something I want to add to this content-wise, I can go in and all the pages will reflect that then. So I, I, I'm less concerned about getting all the, all the details in the HTML right because, of, again, the whole beauty of, of master pages is that we can go and we can revise it. So let's go and uh, let me go and apply my style sheet. around the one but not the other. Um, so now I'm using the style sheet. I'm not going to do much in the style sheet, but again, I'll do a few things. The body, I will make a uh, family Helvetica, um, Ariel, Sans Serif, the banner, I will make background shade of dark blue, pound sign zero 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 um, three three. Color white. Nav with twenty percent float left. Seventy percent 
slow left. I'll give this a background of light gray. so that we can see it, and I'll give the content a background of Um, we're pretty well on the, well, yeah, we're on the mark. There's our header, our nav. Next was the content area. There's nothing in the content area. And then there is the footer. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clone to make some pages. All right. And um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to put um, some headers in the page. Um, and I'm going to put in uh, just a paragraph of Greek text just to, to uh, flush that out. Keep in mind, you know, I'm doing this as a demonstration. I don't want to sit here and write long, thoughtful paragraphs about the CISS division. For your assignments and for your project, you won't use Greek text, all right? Um, your pages need to look like finished web pages. My pages need simply to communicate the ideas that I'm trying to get across in class. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to make, uh, if you remember from the diagram, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. All right. So, let me go and create a new file. In the wrong place. Where was I? File, new, file. Oh, I'm just, I've just scrolled down a little bit. Web form. I'm going to call my first web form default. That is uh, a standard name for a page, and web servers are typically set up to call, if it exists, to call default.aspx if no page is given. You ever wonder how, like, if you go to Google, you don't type in the URL, you don't type in the full page name. You don't say google.homepage.html or google.whatever. Web, uh, web uh, servers have uh, a set of default pages that they look for. And you can modify those default pages. And in IIS, one of the default pages is default.aspx. So if we do that, then we'll make this... Um, sort of the home page. So if anyone were to navigate, if we were to put this up on, a, uh, on, a, on a, 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 an outside web server and we had a domain, if anyone put in the domain, they'd get this default ASPX page. So I'm going to call this one default. All right. I'm going to just whip through these real quick. Um, New web form, we'll call this one not default to, but we'll call this one programming. Also should go in and set the title for these and all that. I might do that for a few, but even if I don't, then, then you still need to do it. Networking. So there's three of them. 